Chuck was running these last year and and we were I know I completely forgot about a couple of them and so it got down to where it was just wasn't happening we thought oh well, let's just cancel it for the rest of the year and stuff but I was talking to him and I said you know the thing is there's so much that keeps coming out that's new mm -hmm. and we have new members mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know where they're at and so I you know I thought well if, if we start somewhere we also have our members have different programs so you want to try and cover you don't want to just cover one program so mm -hmm. my goal is to do this monthly right. on the what are we the third thursday of the month uh, i think uh yeah. and whenever we can we'll do it on that that same day at one o'clock run about an hour and a half and we'll try and cover some some things and i'll try and put out something in the monday news flash about what we're going to talk about some ideas because then you might be interested or you might not be so um but but i just thought we would kind of gauge it that way and i had to start somewhere for today um so i thought about talking about some what i call best practices i'm i'm gearing them towards lightroom but you could gear that towards any program you're using if it's photoshop or photoshop elements or even adobe bridge which is you know another that's that's like the redheaded stepchild of the of the programs, but uh, and they're not they're not official best practices, but they're ones I use, and I figure it's worth repeating because sometimes even experienced people go, oh, you know, I hadn't thought of that, or uh, that's an, an interesting way to approach it, or something. So anyway, and if you have questions or anything, we can do that towards the end of the meeting. I want to get an idea, if, like for topics, if people want to cover different things in the in the future so so let's go ahead and i'm going to mention by just to remind everyone because this is going to be geared towards lightroom but like i said it, it can be for any program you're using for a lot of these features um keep in mind that lightroom is a database manager <laughs> that they started out real simple with retouching and now you know you look at some of the stuff you can do uh and it's non-destructive retouching which is which is really good uh so you don't have to worry about damaging your images uh it's important to uh learn how the lightroom catalog works you know they use the term import um that may that's not always the best word it could be register you're registering these images in the in the catalog or assigning them to the catalog you do sometimes when you when you import, you could import pictures already on your computer and just add them to the Lightroom catalog, or you can put your memory card in and you're taking them from the memory card and moving them uh, somewhere uh, to you know a different different location that you've chosen uh, on your computer. Uh, but again, Lightroom never overwrites your original images and edits. So if you if you do a shot and it's you put that yellow sunlight, you know sunset sunlighting and you decide later I don't want that it's it's really easy to go back in and just change the slider for that which is that's one of the beauties of the program um it one thing that's important we all know is and you got to be organized and uh, so you have to decide where you're going to store your images that's a that's a important um uh, best practice figure out where you're going to store them um oh Rhonda's here good so we just got started Rhonda um, welcome to the welcome to the to the meeting. Uh, you figure out where you're going to store your images, and the important thing is to be consistent. That's the one thing I find more and more when I talk to people about different programs they're running, and they they change halfway through, and they decide, oh, I'm going to store this over here or something. So it, it's important that you're consistent on where you store your images. Uh, you know, Lightroom by default, when they when Adobe wrote the product. They had to pick somewhere, so they usually pick the pictures folder on your <laughs> on your C drive or your main you know main hard drive. And the problem with that is it can fill up really fast, and you know especially if you take a lot of pictures. So uh, it's important to figure out something. A lot of us have gone to external hard drives. Uh, I just recently switched from a from a standard hard, a mechanical hard drive to an SD drive, solid state drive, and that's much. Uh, I've seen a real increase in the speed at which I could do things. So, and they've come down in price. That's the other thing, you know, for a while, I think it was during the beginning of the pandemic with the supply chain, everything had gone up so much. And now, you know, you can get an eight terabyte drive for, you know, $149 or something. So it, it's important to do that. Another best practice is to make sure you have different backups in places you store things. So you, when you back up your, 
when you exit Lightroom, it's going to ask you, do you want to back up? And I, I do a lot in Lightroom. I have, it's open on my computer almost every day. And so, yeah, I always back up and I always make sure, I'll make sure when you back up that you hit the, uh, there's one for or checking the integrity of the catalog. That'll help make sure there's no problems. There's no, uh, it looks for things for errors and stuff like that. Um, so, and have a, have a, a place to generally don't, they say, don't put your catalog I'm sorry. Yeah, don't put your catalog on an external drive. Have that on an internal drive in your computer because it'll run faster. You can have your images on the other drive, uh, and and generally you don't want to put everything on one. In, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So that's the reason I have like a my catalogs on my main drive. I have a backup of the catalog on another drive, and then one in the cloud. And uh, you know, you can never have too many of those safety protocols. Um, Another thing you have to come up with is your, and this again, I know this is kind of beginner stuff, but it's a best practice, is to figure out what kind of organizational structure you want to have to your to your photos. And if you, you know someone who's just starting out is not going to have as many pictures, but you got to plan ahead because pretty soon you'll have two or three thousand, four thousand a year. So it's important to have uh, a big enough place to store them. Uh, and then an organized manner of storing them. I think most of us uh, probably started out, I don't know, may still do it, where you organize your images uh, chronologically. You know, Lightroom typically is a hierarchical uh, structure. So there's going to be a master folder, and inside that you might have a folder for the year, and inside that you might have folders for the months. And if you don't shoot a lot of pictures, that might be fine. But if you shoot a lot of pictures in a month, you might want to have small folders, you know, inside that. That's a typical way to uh, to do a folder structure in, in most programs uh, like Lightroom and, and even Photoshop Elements, which has the organizer that you can, can use. Um, it's important to be consistent. <laughs> Don't change anything from where you from where you um, store, you know, I mean, how you store your images, how you name, you know, name your folders and stuff. Try and always have that because if you, if you change midstream, that's when you really run into problems. And I, I think it was about ten years ago I decided I didn't like the way I was organizing and, and naming my folders and stuff. And it took me about a month to go through and get it to a, a better system that I wanted. That that brings up the other topic. Make sure you only make changes for images that have been ported into Lightroom in Lightroom. So if you're going to rename something, <laughs> don't rename it in your Explorer window or what, the, uh, Apple has a different name, the Finder, uh, because then it'll have a question mark on it and you'll have to go locate where it went. So uh, if you're going to change names, if you're going to delete anything, if you're going to move a folder of pictures somewhere, Always go in. Lightroom's easy. You can just grab that folder and move it over, and it drops into another, uh, another, another folder. Um, there's no perfect organizational method. Everybody, like I said, finds their own method. I, I happen to use the folder method. I'm wondering, does any, does everyone here use a folder type method for storing images? One of the other, I'll mention that. The reason I ask is one of the other um, uh, systems that actually Scott Kelby, I just saw a video he recommended is. He said, just import it all into a one, you know, a folder on your computer and then go into the collections section, which is always at the bottom on the left hand side and uh, and just put a make a collection for family pictures, make a collection for a uh, wildflower landscape or something. And I thought, well, I, I might work, but I have a lot of different things I shoot. I don't know if that would work as well for me, but for some people, a lot of people seem to like it. The one thing they like is when you go to look at folders in Lightroom, you can only see them in the library module. Once you go into develop, oh, I want to go back and look and I have to go back to that library to go to the folder, whereas collections are always at, in the bottom of that left side, even if you're in develop. So some people, I, I just well, I watched two or three videos this week that they said, oh, this is the best way to do it. And I'm like, well, if it works for you, and as I said, as long as it's is consistent uh, is the important thing. So, well, uh, let's see. I said, um, just looking at my notes. Yeah. Uh, test integrity, optimized catalog. Okay. 
Uh, talked about I was going to say, yeah. Chris, just on, on that, I, I've seen yeah. you know, recommendations too. Uh, to they, some people organize it by date, you know, by month, by date, and all that stuff. Uh, I know, I, and I think what you said was important. It's important to do it your way because I can. My I don't have a good memory of when I was someplace. So somebody will say, "I want my Australia pictures." Well, I can't remember. I was there a year or two ago. Okay, uh, I would rather have a folder called Australia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's for me. That works. No, no, and I know some other. I know some landscape. Yeah. I know a landscape photographer who's a lot on YouTube and stuff, and and he said the reason he does that is he does so much at national parks and state parks, and he said he he does it by state and national park and state yeah. parks, and you know has it that way. And and I know some people who do country and stuff. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because sometimes I have a pretty good memory for where we've traveled over the years, and and uh, sometimes my wife will say, "Why did we go to Wales or something?" And I'll go. Let me go look in my life, right, my catalog. And of course, I can look at a keyword for Wales and I can bring up every photo I ever took in Wales. So I can say, oh, we were there. You know, this is the folder. We were there in 2021, whatever. So, you know, it, it, you do fine. That's the important thing. Everybody has a different method. Yeah. Um, I think the date thing got started because most of us, when we get our first our camera, the first thing you do, it tells you put in the, the, the date and the, and the time and the time zone you're in. And, you know, that's why if you're, traveling it's important to keep that up to date or when the clocks change and the new year comes so uh uh but but that because you all your pictures that's one of the first things that goes into the metadata is the the date and the, and the time so uh yeah it and again as as on top of what chuck said it's just find what works for you and be consistent that's that's the big thing if you change stuff halfway through your you'll lose things yeah. um, i'm really bad about putting in keywords i'm not bad i'm terrible about putting in keywords and and i i tend to store by date and then i spend half my life trying to find oh where's where's that spoonbill picture yeah. i used to be really bad and i remember there was a time when i hadn't been doing much with keywords but this is about like six years six seven years ago and i looked and i thought oh i got so many so i just started at we're going way back in my folders and I would just go through in Lightroom and I would look at a folder and I'd go, oh, this was the so-and-so trip and or this is the, you know, the, the pool party and, and and I would put in the, P and you can use, in fact, in Lightroom, I'm not sure if Photoshop Elements has this, but I know in Lightroom you have the thing where you can click on um, look at faces and it will try, it'll, it'll bring you a whole, it looks like a spreadsheet or a, a contact sheet of all the faces it finds in all those photos. And once you start naming people, it gets pretty good at when you go like a six months later into a folder with those people, a new folder, it's pretty good most of the time of saying, oh, is this so-and-so? You know, it has a question mark and then you click, yeah, enter, enter, enter. And uh, that's unless, another way to fix it. Easy. Unless you're an identical triplet. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Which Emily is. <laughs> but uh, but again, it, it, it takes time just like anything. And, and I, I, I ended up getting all my collection, all my key, I, I keyworded every picture. I, I, even if it, when I, when I import, even if it's just to say, you know, Houston or <laughs> something, I shot these pictures in Houston, you know, and then I'll, I'll go in and fine tune it later on. Chris, uh, is it easy to go back? To yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, when I get into the, I'm not, okay. when I share screen, yeah. I'll bring it up and show you, but it, you can actually look, there's a collection, a smart collection over on the collection side on the left for pictures without a keyword. <laughs> oh. And what, so then you, when you click on that, it's going to bring up every picture that you have. And then you can just kind of go through, you could, you could do a click here, shift, click there and get a whole block of pictures and add a keyword, boom, hit enter, it's gone. They're out of that. They've been moved out of the not keyword uh, folder oh, so that's, that's good to know yeah i'll show i'll show that in a little bit uh and again yeah that's one one thing i'm looking for is questions because i was trying to think ahead like what can i cover <laughs> and not be too repetitive or whatever so yeah that's good to good thank you um okay one thing i want to mention this is a, it's funny it's a controversial subject because you can have multiple catalogs with lightroom but I'm going to say for most average photographers, you probably can buy with one catalog. It can get confusing to have other catalogs. Um, 
it used to be when Lightroom came out for probably, you know, 10 up to about eight years ago, if you had too many pictures, you know, like 100,000 pictures in this catalog, it would run real slow, but they, they've fixed a lot of that. So uh, they claim, Adobe claims, it doesn't matter if you have a million pictures in there, it should all run, you know, run correctly. Um, I actually have three catalogs. I have one for all my pictures, general, just general pictures, day to day. I have one for pictures when I scan with my Epson scanner, old prints, or if I scan, I use my camera to photograph slides and negatives that my parents took. Uh, I just figured it was easy to have a separate catalog, so I don't do that. I don't mess with that very often, but I made a separate catalog I can open up. And I have a third catalog because I do genealogy, and I save almost all copies of birth certificates and all the stuff I find on the web. I save it as a JPEG. So I ended up coming up with a separate one for genealogy catalog in Lightroom. And that way, if I make corrections to pictures, I can export them in there. I'm using Lightroom as a tool. Uh, editing tool, but I'm also organizing them. So that's an unusual situation. I knew one photographer who told me, it was a friend of mine, he said, well, he was a working photographer. He said, he also did nude photography. And he said, I don't want to mix those in. So I'm accidentally showing a client some pictures and I, I bring up the wrong folder or something. So <laughs> he had a reason for, for doing that. Um, anyway. Yeah, I just, I just as a, as an aside, I mean, I have one catalog for everything. I just have folders, one called personal, one called this, you know, things like that. So I, I just, yeah. you know. and again, it's whatever works, you know, for you, uh, whatever, you know, it, 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 whatever sticks, it makes it stick in your mind um, better is, is what's important. Um, okay. That being said, I'm going to share screen and I'm going to bring up, what do I have here? That's good. It always tells me I want screen one. I hit share. And you should see a pelican. There you go. Yep. Okay. Nice. <laughs> it's always it's always fun when you, you know, we've done we've all done this before, at least most of us have. We've done a Zoom call, but it, there's like that synapse gap where everyone's like, Do you see this yet? <laughs> <laughs> And I can't figure out if it if the image is flying around the, the planet three times before it lands somewhere or on the <laughs> server, but it always seems to take a moment for it to all go through. I still think, you know, probably the one good thing to come out of the COVID pandemic was the Zoom, you know, became very easy to do. Uh, so, okay, I, I've got this just open because this is Lightroom and this is just, I'm going to go over some things that I think are important or good to know. Um, you, you know, everyone in here may already know this stuff, but uh, I figure, well, that's there, there, there's, you know, you always learn something. You can always have the, the chance to learn something new. So uh, as you can see on the, on, on, on do you notice my big, I, I had to go into my settings and make my cursor really big. So, cause I hate when people do a demo and you can't find their cursor. So you should be seeing a large arrow. And uh, so I have my stuff organized like this. I have folders. Going back to seven pictures I took in 2002. That was my first digital pictures. I borrowed someone's Kodak point and shoot digital camera. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was all I did then. Anyway, just see, I have, I do that. And then I have a system where, for instance, like I said, I, I create a folder for every project. I, I call them projects. It goes back to my work days when I actually got paid to take pictures and I'd have an envelope for all the receipts on the job or something and the, and the negatives and things. And and I just have well, it's a it's a system that works for me. So you know I can say well winter birds I know, and I might have summer birds or spring birds or I just called it that and it's just a way to remember them. Um, but that's that's you know over here on your on your um, uh, this part of we're in the library module which as you see up here on the right we've got the uh, those are your modules we're in the library. Okay I'm going to go down to collections uh, and I'm going to see here. Uh, ah, here it is. Without keywords. Does everyone see this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If I click on that, it's going to okay. Oh, it's an infrared. But, These hey, are Chris, shots uh, probably. Chris, why, don't, why don't you look at the settings on that uh, collection? How did you set it up? Double click. That, that. That's a smart collection that comes with. Uh, oh, oh, okay. All right. All it's right. it's in Lightroom. Right. And so it's in your collections uh, folders or main main thing here. And it's, it's, yeah. it's down. 
uh, it's the last, you have smart collections. I did some, one here for family. That's one I set up. But that these are the ones that come up past month, recently modified video <laughs> files. And you might be able to change those in your preferences if you wanted different things in there. But I put that in there. And and if you look in that down, down here, which is the bottom, we call that the, the film strip. I'm going to make it a little bigger. Um, a lot of these, I know what they are. They're like things like TIFF files. When I when I go to edit something in a in a, another program, it creates a, either a PSD or a TIFF file. And a lot of times, unless I go in and add the keywords, uh, yeah, because these are all from contests I've been in, various things, and some AI I've done, you know. So there, and look, I've even got a couple down here that I don't know why. Those are from the other day. I probably imported them later, and I didn't put in keywords. Those are from yesterday. But mostly, I, that's where I, I will find this. And as you can see, I've got, uh, well, about up at the top, I'm not going to just fly up there, but I have like 65,000 pictures in my catalog and only 67 are, are not. So what is that? One thousand, one one thousandth of the, of the catalog is, pretty not, good. is not keyworded. But if you need that, that's where you go. And like I said, and you can, uh, one thing you can do in this, okay, so I, I, I can look at this and I go, okay, this first shot, um, it tells me that it's called, I'm going to look uh, up here in the little bar. It's it's saying it's uh, 202305601011 infrared test shots, edit to TIFF. That's the name of that folder file. Well, where would I go to find it? Well, I can right click on it and I can say, go to folder in library. Boom. And it's just taken me up and now I'm back up in my folder thing and it's right there. And I can... If I go over to keyword list, keywording, there's no keyword. I'm, uh, can you see I'm on this right side now? I've just turned on this keyword box and I'm going to type in. Infrared. Okay, and I'm going to hit enter. So now it has a keyword. And if I go back down here to, where was it? Uh, notice it's not there. It's not, this is my first AI picture. It was called Jesus with a cell phone. I wanted to see what I could do with AI. <laughs> but sometimes you have to do crazy prompts with AI. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's a way to go. And, and it's, it's, when you see it, you want to keyword it. Uh, you can keyword it here, or you can go, I'm going to go look in the folder and see why I don't have a keyword or something. So, so that's, yes. Okay. What if you have several, like, let's say you're three birds here. Okay, right? so I can click on this. Right. I have no keyword. I'm going to click, I'm going to do a shift, hold down, shift, click. Okay. I'm going to go up here to keywords and I'm going to say. Okay, so you uh, can do it right like that. Yeah, and the beauty of keywords is, I don't know if you noticed that in that box, but once it. It, I started typing because I've already entered it. It came up as an option, and then all you hit is enter, and it it just and now, uh, oh, all right. So you I have did to. This, I did this wrong. Let oh. me get okay. In order to make all of them go, uh huh, you need to go to the grid mode. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm in loop mode. I forgot uh -huh. that when you when you want to select several pictures to do something with, and don't know why they do this, you go to grid mode, which is the the letter G. And they're mm -hmm. highlighted. And now if I type and let's try it again. Uh, red. Ah, they're gone. Okay. So okay. they just, they that's how you do it. But you, I forgot, you have to go to, it, it's a funny quirk in Lightroom. You have to go to these, what they call grid mode. And once you're in grid mode, then you can select several images. Uh, if you want to change names, of, of fa files, that's another thing. You have to be in grid mode when you select those images to say change name or something like that. Uh, I don't know why, but it's just one of those one of those quirks. So, Thank you. So let me, while we're here, I'm, I'm gonna talk about, I'll just move into something else. I mean, I can stay in this folder. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I am gonna talk real quick about, okay. So you'll notice, let's go way up here in the right. This is your module bar, <laughs> tool, module toolbar, whatever. It comes with other things in it. It, it. it basically comes with seven modules. There's a library, develop, map, print, slideshow, book, and web. Well, I don't do a whole lot other than look at my catalog and do some developing. And occasionally I look, if I use the GPS device on my camera, 
I want to look where the picture was taken. You can you can make those appear or disappear by right clicking in this black gray area, blank area. And as you can see, I only have library, develop and map click. So these are ways you can personalize what works for you. I don't need all, I don't need to see book. I, I haven't made, ever made a book. Some people do with, with you can do it with Lightroom or print, but I don't do it enough. If I needed to do it, I would just click on it and it would appear in this bar. But right now, as you can see, I only have those three there and that that works for me. Um, so right now, as I said, we are in grid mode in the library. Grid mode is like Think of an old contact sheet back in the film days when you, you know, had well, if you ever had a contact sheet made. Um, if I want to go into the develop mode, which is a, a, a mode change, I just hit the D key. If I'm, oh, there it goes. So now you can see it's moved into develop and it's moved into that. Uh, is that a, a, a tricolored heron, I think? I'm not sure. I don't know my herons as well. Yes, it is. It is, okay. <laughs> um, and and it went into uh, develop. And let's say I want to, oh, I want to go back into the library. You would think you would hit the L key to go back to library. But if you hit the L key, you get this effect of having a, like a light show. <laughs> it's like a light switch, which I have never used before. But I guess if you wanted to just really isolate an image, um, you actually hit the E key and the E, I use it for examine. So you can examine the image and you go back and now we're back in the library mode. And the only reason I bring that up is those are three, re the, there's a million shortcut keys, but those three are real handy because otherwise you got to grab your mouse, you got to go up here, you got to move stuff around, you know. So uh, just keep those in mind. Those are, those are easy. D for develop, G for grid, and E for <laughs> loop mode. So... Uh, uh, that's okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to mention something else here. Another little tip. This is best practices tips. You can, this little box of information can be changed in so many ways. This is called the loop overlay. Uh, right now I have it set up. Oh, I'm sick. Go away. What are you doing? I don't, I don't know why that just came up. How do I turn it off? Hold on. I have the HP assistant. Ah, go away. Okay. So uh, up here in this left corner, I'm on this image, and it tells me this was my camera, was my Canon EOS uh, R7 at 599 millimeters, and it was a uh, Tamron 150 to 600, it tells what lens it was, it tells a thousandth of a second at f11 ISO uh, 800, and it's a 2.8 megapixel image. So how did I get that information to come up? If you go to view and you go down here, I'm dropping down to view options. You'll get a window. And here we are in loop view. I can put, and you can change this. You can have whatever you want. Like I have, this is what I'm on. I guess I'm on number two. Um, if I didn't want exposure and ISO, well, I could change it to just about anything. And I just find that useful information. Uh, so, cause a lot of times I'm looking at things, otherwise I'd have to go into the metadata which means I have to go back, you know, or go go over here on the right and find it. So that's if you go under view down to view options, that's that's where that will that will put you. Um, there's two two of these. So this is view option number two. If I hit the I key, it will cycle to no option, no information, or else it, I can cycle to. In this case, I chose to have my file name the date I took it, the time I took it, and the cropped size. So it tells me that, you know, that, that that's important stuff to know. I, again, I could go over to the metadata panel, but I just thought, well, this is kind of a good thing to remind people that you can change this information any way you want. So, okay, I'm gonna go now back to um, the develop panel. And, okay. Real quick, over here on the right side of the develop panel, uh, you'll probably on your computer, you'll see usually the default size. It's like, oh, it's not that small. But normally when you open Lightroom, the default size of this panel is pretty small. And what you find is sometimes this having it small means your adjustments are much more increased 
you, you barely move this, this slider and things will start changing. And so one thing you can do, again, this is all under customizing things, is drag this over. Suddenly your sliders, I, I'm not cropping it on my image. I mean, it's moving it over a little, but now you've got a lot more room. And if you want to make little micro adjustments, it's a lot easier to do. Um, so that's something you can do to customize. Uh, and again, part of best practices is to learning how to customize things. Uh, one of the other ways to customize, I'm going to come down here and just lower that down. I don't move that that big. Uh, you've got your develop um, different modules or, or actions you can do. Um, we've got, you know, basic, I've got lens correction, transform, effects, detail, tone curve, color mixer, color grading, calibration, and lens blur. A lot of people don't know you can change those. You can go into customize the develop panel. And by grabbing this little thing, you if you don't like, well, not, basic's pretty usually the first thing. But if, if you don't use the tone curve a lot, you just grab it. You can drag it down to the bottom and leave it at the bottom. If you save it, though, you will have to restart the program in order for that to take effect. But what it'll do is it will change the order over, over here uh, of things. And this just happens to be an order that I like because I usually do basic first. I might check. I, I now try to do lens correction as a preset when I import. Um, but if you didn't, if it's an older image, I might, I might do a lens correction. Uh, I might do a... Uh, uh, transform, uh, you know, effects is to do a vignette or something like that. So those again, you can you can customize. The other thing I really like to do, and I I, I usually encourage people to do this, is this panel. If you'll notice, every time I click, I'm a, I'm in basic, but if I click on lens corrections, basic closes, and that's easy to do if you come down here and um, click on solo mode. Uh, having the panels collapse is otherwise you'd have you'd be scrolling down to get to the the next panel if you don't collapse them. So uh, so that's a good one to do. So um, that's pretty much. I didn't have a whole lot more. I wanted to just cover some of the basic things I do uh, in 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 customizing my page. Plus, I don't want to bore you to tears uh, with all of that. Well, Chris, uh, can I yes. ask a question? You're just yes. right. You're just right clicking in the grid in order to get that menu option. Yes, and... yes. Like here, uh, I right click. I'm sorry. And it's, I, it, <laughs> that's it, okay. I just yeah, wanted to no, no. Yeah, no. And, you know, that's true of almost anything. Like up here, you right click. It's, uh, I don't know what they call that, but it's the, the right click button seems to always open a sub menu or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, so, oh, I know I was going to add one thing. You can also customize this toolbar down here. Uh, this this is one that's very handy because you can have all you, all different choices, and if you don't see it, like it's gone now. If you touch the T key for a toolbar, it comes back. And if I right click, let's see, no, if, I'm sorry, right click. If I go down here, this is an arrow down here. If I clicked on that arrow, I left click. It tells me all the things I can put in this bar. I tend to not do navigate or slideshow or soft proofing. I, I, I don't, soft proofing sounds like something you do when you bake bread. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but these are all things I use. I use the zoom a lot. I sometimes I want to, if I was going to go up here and crop uh, and I go like this, I want to show a grid and that kind of stuff. So, uh, so those are all things that I like, I have on here and you can change, you know, your grid, you can, you can zoom in here. Uh, you can add, this is where if you say, oh, I want to make this a red, because uh, it's, it's, that's how I categorize stuff in my in my thing. And now you see in the toolbar, it's red uh, or stars or flags, which is the one I use a lot for, if, that, if it's a shot I want to work on, it gets a flag, usually a, red, a white flag. That's not surrender. That's just to indicate to you what you want it. Um, where, where was the red? The red right here. Yeah, but when I clicked on it, that that bird that that one got a little red frame around it down in the toolbar. I'm not toolbar. Oh, in the toolbar. You go to grid, grid, I mean, grid in the view. Film if you, have, if okay. you set up grid view too with it, you, it'll show up sometimes. Yeah, how you yeah. Set up grid view. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, 
you know, they're just these are handy little things. They're they're shortcuts. I mean, you can do keys. Of course, you can hit the the seven key or the eight key. It's di different ones are for different colors. Different ones are for different numbers. It's like you wonder, you wonder about colors just for the hell of it. Yeah, I, I use green for example. When I finish editing something, I'll hit the eight key and it turns it green. So I so I'm looking at the grid view. I can look at all the green pictures with green frames. I know I finished editing those. Yeah, and another thing you can do, and and that's a good point. If you go in here, see down here on the right, I'm just in this gr little gray area, and it says there's no filters right now. But if, and if I cl I'm left clicking, and it says filters are off. But if I wanted to look at uh, red, oh okay. Whoa, that those are that's the one picture in that folder that's been flagged. So if you have a lot of pictures with colors in a big folder, you want to see those, or you want to see what's been flagged or what's gotten a number five. That's another way to do it is to come into your into your little filter thing. That's how also you like. I don't think red. I created that. It wasn't. Uh, I I I highlighted the red like it is now down here. This image, and then I said uh, save current settings as a new preset, and I called it red. You. That's how you. Have, they don't. It comes with a few. Like it will come with camera info, default columns, exposure info, filters off, flagged. But I think I added most of these over time. So that's how you would do that. You would just come in and say, just save it. Or you know, you can restore it, go back to what it came with, uh, delete if you no longer need a red preset, or rename it. Do you find that's better than putting stars on it? No, I I, I don't. I, I think it's whatever works for people. Some people, well, for instance, I'm just going to use Chuck's example. I mean, you might, like here, I'm using red. Let's say I've Pick, let's say I have seven red pictures of different birds. Then I might hit stars to say, well, out of these red, I like this one the best. So it gets five yeah. stars, you know, or something. So you have a double label on it. Yeah. And oh, and yeah. you can do that. It's, 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 that's what, that's the beauty of the, all these programs. And, and I know I'm, I'm going to get out of Lightroom in a little bit here, but uh, uh, for those of us that are using other programs, like, like I am now. So, uh, you know, but, but you can do this in multiple programs. They almost all have ways, again, these are database management programs. There's some element, whether it's uh, Adobe Bridge or or Photoshop Elements uh, Organizer, or even On One or Luminar Neo. They all have ways to uh, keep track of stuff like this. Okay, real quick, uh, I'm I'm going to let's see what's our time. Well, one thirty nine. Give me about ten more minutes, Chuck, and then we'll move to you. I want to bring up, uh, and again, look over here on the left. I have a collection, and I put two images in a collection called PPSIG 2024 March. That's a great way. <laughs> so you're not going, hold on while I find this picture I want to show you. Uh, if I click on this, boop, it goes in, and I have two pictures. I'm going to edit these. I'm going to ed I'll edit both if I have time. If not, I'll edit one. But I thought this one might be appropriate. Um, just hold on, I need to bring up one other thing. Okay. Yeah, this one might be appropriate just because we, people are going to photograph wildflowers. And this is a, uh, a shot I did in 2017, spring wildflowers. Uh, if I went back into the library mode, I could look up the time I took it. I might even have it on the, on the GPS in the map mode, although I'm not... I need to get better at remembering to turn on the, the GPS. I don't always leave it on because it runs the battery down. Um, okay, so let's just say you, you're, you and this is a raw image now, and I'll clarify, Can, my Canon camera shoots CR2 or CR3 if it's a newer camera, that's their raw file. Nikon, I think is NEF. NEF, right. Yeah, and Sony is... ARW. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what a Fuji or, a, or a, any of the Lumen, Luminar has or Luminex, but they all have their own thing. So I happen to have this. I started again. I'm consistent. When I import, I I import my my um, uh, raw Canon raw files and I change them to a DNG, which is Adobe's format called digital negative. I I got in the habit of it. It's slightly smaller in size than the Canon raw file. It's it's it, you know it's it's easier to look at on my computer on a Windows computer. Sometimes I can't see a CR3. It's just a you know it just says picture or something. And so I I find the the digital negative files 
are what work for me. And I just, I convert them and I delete my raws. I just, cause it has all the data in there. So, um, so this is kind of, you know, again, people forget that when you import your, your images, even if you shoot a raw file, your, your Lightroom will make a little uh, JPEG uh, preview. You know, that's always in the upper corner of the, when you do your Lightroom import, it'll say what, what size, uh, you know, preview, what type of preview, do you want smart previews, which means that you can take the computer somewhere, the drive somewhere else, and it will still, the pictures don't have to be on your computer, you'll have them in the, in Lightroom as smart previews, but I don't do that, I just do previews. Anyway, so the preview looks okay, but it's not real, we know that field looks better. So the first thing you kind of say is, well, and again, there's no perfect way to do uh, an edit or a workflow, it's what you develop. I tend to usually kind of crop first because sometimes cropping will affect I'm gonna I'm gonna do more like a rule of thirds here I think and I, I shot this with a wide angle lens so everything's pretty sharp and I thought well let's just bring the horizon down and I don't see anything on the right or left ah, I got a little building over here I'm gonna take that out and I'm when you click on the next bar up here you used to have a done button you could click and it would go go to whatever was next but now I click on that it takes me into the this is your editing uh, suite here. And I'm going to look at that and I'm going to go, you know what? Let's just see what auto. Auto is, yeah. here's some AI that's working in you on uh, in the background. I'm going to hit auto. It's going to take a second. Ah, that's better. I mean, and you can see it moved all these sliders and kind of, it's not perfect. It can be better than this. Uh, this was shot a couple years ago and it's, it's the color is what's called Adobe Standard Version 2, which I think Scott Kelby said that was a little bit better than version one, which was really horrible. So um, I'm I like I'm going to make this a little more punchy. And again, punchy. whatever you like, but I'm going to I'm right. I'm left clicking on this little window and I'm going to say, let's see what Adobe landscape looks like. OK, it just intensified the greens a little bit more. OK, uh, I'm looking at this and I think I'm going to lighten. I'm looking at the ground. I can work on the sky later. I'm going to bring up the colors a little there. Uh, like the shadows, I'm going to hold down the alt key, which is what's in the alt key on a Op option option on, on an Apple. On a and if I click here, uh, it's showing me that there's up in the sky. I'm not real worried about that's blown out. In other words, I'm not real worried about it because it's it's those white clouds up there. And if I click on this one, an option or alt and do that. OK, and down in the lower left. You're starting to see some blacks that are that are blocking up uh, there, but that's not that's not important. That's these deep shadows down here. So, so I kind of like that. Um, but I, I definitely want to make my sky better. So, what can I do to do that? Well, if I click on the masking tool, which is the new and improved, then I can say sky. Let's give it a second. It's looking for a sky. Detecting. Oh, there it is. It's again, it's it's detected the sky. For those of you that don't know, you can change this color if, for instance, if it was on blue, it wouldn't look real good to see a blue mat overlay on a blue sky. So red is good. Okay. It's, and, and you can show the overlay or not show it. I kind of want to show it. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come into these. Um, I want to take, I'm going to go down to the dehaze. I'm I'm scrolling down. Let's let's kind of dehaze that sky a little bit. That's nice. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back up, back up here. I'm going to take the highlights down. That's another one that kind of takes those blown out look in the clouds. And maybe you can exposure just a little bit. That's a little too much. You don't want to go overboard. That's pretty. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm cool with that. I don't see. I don't think I see much else I would do there. But. I do feel like there's there's some areas, I don't know if it was partly cloudy, it looks like it was a hazy cloud over me and there's not clouds back here, but I want to kind of do another thing here. I'm going to say, let's just get a brush, a good old brush. And if you see here, uh, let's go on something, good. that's the size of the brush. The bracket keys that are over on the most the right side of most computers, I can make that bigger or smaller by just clicking a bracket key. I'm going to go in here. I'm scrolling. I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little and I'm going to I'm just going to paint. 
in some stuff here. I'm, I'm even going to change it a little. I'm, I'm going to exaggerate it just a little. And I'm just, you know, I'm finding some areas that I think could be a little brighter. I don't think it all needs brightening. Maybe down here. So that's just things you can do, you know, with the, with the masking tool. And again, it shows us up here. We have my brush tool in, in mask two, and mask one was the sky. And, uh, and then if we want to get out of that, we click here. Okay. And it's, it's gone. And that to me is decently edited. I think it's a nice shot. So uh, that, that's how I would do it. And what we're going to do is um, Chuck created a digital, uh, I mean, a, a Dropbox folder that we're going to get the link out to everybody. And I'll put some images in there. And then if you want, you can play with them. <laughs> and at our next meeting, if you want, you can show us what you did because everybody would do something different. So I just thought it would be like having homework if you want homework. It's not really mandatory homework, but it'd be an idea. Anyway, we can try it and see how it works. So the neat thing, Chris, is there's no right and wrong, like you said. I mean, there's things that you just did that I probably would do differently, but that's good. I like your Yeah, picture. yeah. And again, that's true. And and there there is, you know, there's there's so many different ways to do things. You know, it used to be I would have done a a linear gradient on the sky and now yeah. that select sky select background select you know sh the subject it's and even select people in a picture wow. um, it really made it made it so much easier so okay i'm going to go ahead and unshare my screen uh i'm going to let chuck take over and talk a little bit let's go stop share uh, he's going to talk a little bit about photoshop and layers and i suggested that because that's an area I've been doing Photoshop for 20 years and I still get, which layer do I use? You know, why am I using a layer here? You know, I remember the first time I heard about layers, the, I forget if it was a, one of Scott Kelby's things. He, whoever the speaker was, likened it. Do you remember in high school, you had an anatomy book or a biology book and it had a picture of like the man with the skeleton. And every time you flipped the page over, it was an acetate page and suddenly all the muscles went on and the nervous system. <laughs> so that's a, I remember them saying, well, that's what layers are like. And I was like, nowadays, I don't even know if they do that in high school anymore. So. They don't have books anymore. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hmm. You know, when I found out my one grandson was actually in a gaming cl uh, club, to compete and i'm thinking so i said do you play like football you know gaming he goes no we kill people <laughs> <laughs> anyway okay i'm gonna go get a drink of water because my glass is empty and i'll be right back but i'm gonna turn uh, it over to chuck okay no I'll, I'll wait for your uh let me just uh get my screen up here like chris said i hope you can see the screen here i've got some stuff here um uh, let's see i'm gonna take this yeah, but let, let's do something. I'm going to do uh, stop. I'm going to sh share my other screen. Uh, we lost Bill O'Barr, huh? He couldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me get this thing up. Maybe I'll I'll do that screen here. Oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, that's gorgeous. Okay, let's get this up. And what we'll do is. You can see my, oh, shoot. Give me this thing a little bit bigger here. That's just a picture I'm going to use pretty soon um, yeah. to, to demonstrate something. But I that was happened to be in uh, Montreal, if you guys have never been there. Beautiful city. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait for Chris to show up here. I tend to use Photoshop more than Lightroom, and I'm wondering, well, I, yeah. huh? Yeah, Photoshop is, uh, is I, I use Lightroom a ton, uh, probably well, for all my pictures, but then I, I'd say about 70 or 80% of my pictures at least make it into Photoshop for a round trip um, to do yeah. a couple of things uh, that you can't do in Lightroom. Yeah. That's sort of what I want to talk about. I mean, the power, yeah, layers, of, the power of layers. I don't think you can do layers, can you? What's that? You can't do layers in Lightroom, can you? No. Uh, no, you can't. Well, you know, Randy, uh, you just talked about getting rid of people, you know? Right. You Randy, you there? 
Uh, I'm here. Okay, see the, there's a tool on the left that's called the remove tool. Yeah. So I'm gonna click on that tool there and I'm gonna paint over this guy right here, okay? Yeah. Just <clears throat> sort of paint, paint over him. I should use the, the bigger tool. And once I get rid of, rid of him, he's gone. Wow. Uh, so I mean, I can, so that, that yeah, I really highly recommend if you don't like the dog there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't like the power lines. Yeah, they've made it so much easier. I, I mean, gonna uh, those, those kind of things. And so let's get, let's get into layers. Okay. But I mean, Randy, that was, you know, that, that's, I've done that. I've got rid of a lot of people that way. <laughs> I, I'm going to get that a go. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Let me, let me go to, uh, what I'm going to do to start this thing off is uh, open up a new file as you would typically. Now you might be coming from Lightroom to do this, but you'll be at the same place. I'm going to do file open. I'm going to stay in Lightroom. Uh, I've got a file that I've called, uh, Let's see, let me go to desktop, meet, meeting, PP SIG, uh, uh, plan. I wanna look for base, there's no base. Okay, when, when you do open up a file in, in Photoshop, you'll see on the right side is the layers panel, okay? If you don't see the layers panel uh, in Photoshop, you go to window and make sure that layer is clicked. Okay, so some things that if you don't see them or you see them, it's because this windows is they're not clicked. I don't have everything clicked, obviously, but you'd have too much there. Um, so you start off the layers panel, right? So I just opened an image. The first thing you'll notice with this image is if I try to do something like I get the move tool here and I try to move this image, I get an error. I can't move it. Okay, the reason I can't move it is this a lock sign here. So your images always come in most of the time anyways, unless you import a bunch of them at the same time, come in as locked layers. In order to do something that that image, I'd have to click on that little lock, unlock it. Now I can move it, okay? And you'll notice if I do move that, move that layer, you'll see this, uh, this sort of cross hatch. What that means is transparent. There's nothing there and there's nothing that can be there. Anything I do on this layer is gonna appear up in this area here. Um, so, let me just another some of the, um, uh, uh, the nice uh, shortcuts to know. Control Z. I Control Z. I go back. Uh, the other thing to know is if if you uh, uh, if you have uh, I want to relock this this layer. I can go up and click on this little lock sign here. And now I relock the layer. So now typically what you do is you start off with a, a base layer that's locked. Right. The first thing I usually do because uh, layers in Photoshop are probably the most important thing to know about Photoshop. That's what, where all the power lies. Uh, but the reason is it exists is because Photoshop, unlike Lightroom, is not a database manager. Photoshop, when I uh, change pixels on a picture in Photoshop, I'm changing the pixels on that picture. I'm not changing some slider that I can now undo. Okay, the reason that layers exist is so you can do non-destructive editing. So the first thing I typically do with a layer like this is copy it. A, a, the, the shortcut is Control J. Now I have an unlocked version of that same layer. Okay, now if I do anything and I screw this whole thing up, I can always go back to my original just by getting rid of this. See the little eye next to this layer? I can click it on and off. Of course, it looks the same. I'm going back now, I'm seeing the base layer and I'm seeing the original layer. So basically that's opening up a layer. Uh, and the first thing I do is, is create a new version of that layer uh, so that I can start now wor working on my picture. All right, the, um, and, 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 and transparencies are important that you'll see later. Okay, so that's, <laughs> let me just try, try, try to see good starting points. Okay, select, uh, now let, let me do, let me open up another image, okay? Just to uh, to put something on top of this. Uh, let's see, uh, butterfly, yeah, we'll do that. All right, now you'll notice that this image opened up, the butterfly image is a separate, up above there's a tab here. It's a, it's a separate file opened from my, uh, this base layer. So here's, I've got two images open. I got three images. I'm gonna show you something later on this third one. But so I got the base layer and I got the butterfly layer. 
okay? Like the other layer, I can't move this butterfly layer because it's locked, right? But I, what I can do though, is I can unlock that layer and then I can take the move tool up here above and I can move it over and drop it on top of this layer. Okay, so now you'll see I've got the butterfly layer, the layer that I created and the other. And the butterfly layer is on top of this layer here. If I put it underneath it, I can drag it down. Now it's underneath the layer, you don't see it. If I turn off the, the light, the eye, I can see the butterfly layer is underneath. So let me put it up above again. So just by dragging it up and down, I can reorder the layers. But I want this butterfly to show up on this layer here uh, without this white background, okay? So like, like Chris talked about before, there's different selection tools. I can select subject, just like he did in Lightroom, no different. And it's, it's selected my, my butterfly. If you look at the little marching ants around here, you can see that can uh, you tell it's what selected that the butterfly. No, okay. No. Now what I can do, remember yes. the control J? Uh, before creating a new layer, because this is a well, select... didn't stay long. So, okay, what was that? Uh, never, never mind. I've uh, this is this is Bill. I, I okay. my my Zoom oh. just dropped out. So I've been in and out. I don't oh, didn't oh. know whether I was muted or not. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Sorry. But oh, there's another way. The, the Control J shortcut I, I I told you is actually creating a layer by making a copy of whatever you've selected. So. If I selected this uh, bird, if I if I do a Control J, now it's it's created a new layer, and you can see it has the hash marks, the transparency around it. So if I turn off this layer, which I is underneath it, now I've got the butterfly on top of the the, the flowers. So it, it creating layers, uh, you can do it several ways. You can do it by uh, just uh, you know, I, I could take this layer, for example, if I want to create another, well, let's, let me create another version of this butterfly layer here. I can do that and I can, draw, I can drag it into this little plus sign down here. You can see it create a new layer. Or I could do the control J shortcut. So now I've got two butterflies on top of each other. I'm going to click off of this one of the white backgrounds so we can see below, okay? These two are right on top of each other. Now I can move the layers around by taking the move tool and taking one butterfly and moving it away from the other. Okay. I think it's important to note too that that if you if you're trying to make a change and, and nothing seems to be happening, when you so, want to work on a layer, it's light gray is the active layer in yes. that layer list. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So this the, you can see the active layer and it's different. Here's another layer. Here's another layer. So the, the, you can you can see the active layer. I can turn off the visibility in different layers, right? If I control click on a layer, a command or control click, you see I clicked it and it selected that item. Okay, so I can select different items. I can go down here and control click, it'll select that item um, or just select the entire layer. But that, so, that, so there's different things you can do. Um, I can change the order of the layers. And now once I've, ch uh, I've selected a particular uh, layer, for example, I can take this move tool. Um, let's just go to, I'm going to deselect here and go to uh, selecting that layer there. I can make this butterfly smaller or bigger. Okay. I can do things like uh, I can rotate this butterfly. Okay. And that's on a, on a separate layer. So if you look over here at the layers panel, uh, you, it'll it'll sort of mimic what I'm doing. Okay, so now I've got two butterflies. Uh, the big butterfly is 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 higher than the other. Or on the layer panels is is uh, is is on top of the other one. If I want the small butterfly to be on top of the other one, I'd have to move it up here. Now the small butterfly is on top of the other butterfly. So the layer layers are just simply like Chris said on top of each other, and you can move them around. Okay. There's different things you can do do with layers too. This uh, um, I can change the opacity of a layer. So let's take this big butterfly. I'm doing this now. You'll notice there around the layers there are different menus. Okay, I can go up here 
and go to layers and there's a bunch of different things yeah i can flatten the image by flattening the image it gets rid of all the layers and everything is where it is I, when i talk, talk about destructive editing this is where you destroy everything you've done and, and make one picture out of it if you will i can merge visible if i have see certain layers are visible and some are not this would merge all the layers that i have the eye on them so that kind of thing so merge visible uh and, and it's Chuck, good i heard i heard one photographer who said when you flatten the image it's almost in the old days when you were mounting images and you put it in a dry mount press <laughs> to, to, to mount the print it's like once it's mounted to the map board you're not getting it off so you're you not know. getting it off so i mean if i i will hit flatten because i can undo so i'll flatten the image and you watch watch what happens to these layers here okay flatten the image discard hidden layers yes because the hidden layer is the one that's not visible i'll say yes so now it's had it's one image and it's locked okay the way to undo that is control z okay or uh, for some reason i didn't have it i thought i had the history panel up here history panel okay um the uh oh here, here's history okay so i do have here's history i can go back all the way to the very first thing i did or i can go back to just before i flatten the image so i can go along and, and this uh the photoshop will keep this history for you so i go back to layers now the history panel i have it ch chosen to to show up over here like lightroom you can move things around i can put the history panel on the side over here for example okay if i want to um so i can actually move the history panel around to where i want it i just happen to like it down there okay so that there that we have our layers back now uh including this this uh silly one we don't want here so that's some of the things you can do the other things you can do like i said there, there's there's these kind of things you can create different layer mask i'll show you but that is in a second there's this menu here above the layers panel and there's a len another menu down below it okay so what can you do with some of those um i can change the opacity so that if i'm on the big butterfly i can make him less so i can see see he now is a see-through butterfly okay there's something called fill here too which is a different thing the fill will do the same sort of thing You'll say, well, why do they have two two things? One called fill and one opacity. Well, let me show you something here. Let me create a. Uh, I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll create a, uh, a rectangle tool. Uh, I'm going to just. Get, I'm sort of. I'm thinking about some sort of graphic here. And let, let's do. It. Let me do it. Control Z. Um, I'm going to do a rectangle with uh, with uh, fill on it. Uh, Oh, I know what I'm doing here. I'll bet you this mode. I'm going to do something. Ignore what I'm doing here right now. RGB, no, it's good. Okay. Let me go to fill the rectangle tool. I want to put some, uh, some I'll just put it, make it black fill. Okay, I've just created a, a fill and you'll notice it created its, its own layer uh, that way. If I if I go to opacity on that layer, it's just like anything else. I can make it less or more opaque. The difference between fill and uh, and and uh, uh, opacity is if I put a special effect on this block, say for example, I'm creating some la layers. I hit this FX. I can now say ah, I want to bevel and emboss this thing. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll put the, the little deeper bevel on it. Uh, I'm going to chisel hard size of the bevel. Okay, I'm, so I'm creating creating this bevel around this this thing uh, i will now also put uh so maybe a now let's leave the bevel like that but i'll put a stroke on the bevel so i'm going to select stroke and i'm going to create a size of the stroke um i don't want to put it outside i want to put it inside so I'm, i've created this sort of neat looking little box now i can show you the difference between fill and opacity okay so let's go back and say yeah that's good uh, on on opacity, if I take it down, it uh, on the on this box here, I, it, the whole thing gets less or more opaque, right? Now on fill, if I take it down, it does not affect the uh, the the special effects that I put on there. So the difference between fill and opacity is that any effects you put on fill will keep them in there, um, and sometimes that's good if you're if you're if you're doing uh uh 
text and you want to have an outline on the text, you want to, to have the text fade into the background, but not the outline, things like that. You, there's some different things you can do. So there's a difference between fill and opacity. Um, uh, that's one thing. So that's, that's, that's the FX box and that's the, uh, uh, the fill and, and opacity boxes. There's also blend modes. Okay. So if I look at uh, uh, blend modes, uh, let, let's just take this box again. Now, let me, uh, let me do another box. I'll create another box here. Uh, box i'm going to do the fill is going to be uh i'm going to have 50 percent gray let's let's do something different i'm going to create a another layer on top so there's another way to create a layer here is just hit before i create a layer by dragging one of these layers in and copied it if i just hit the this little icon down here blank it creates a blank there there's nothing there's nothing in that layer you're looking right through it that's why you didn't see a change on the screen, but just on the sec second, I can now fill that that box over there. I'm going to fill that box um, with. I have no. I know the shortcuts. <laughs> that one's a backspace delete, but that's actually just fill. I can also uh, uh, just do a fill uh, using some of the tools over here. But I'm going to fill that with 50% gray. If you're if you do want to do uh, non-destructive dodging and burning. This is a good way to do that. I'll turn this light off. Do you know what dodging and burning is. So if I go uh, uh, the dodge tool and I want to, uh, I want, I want to lighten something. I use the dodge tool so I can go down to this picture here and lighten, uh, you know, do a little uh, dodging on the uh, lightening up the, uh, the, uh, the butterfly if I want to, or darkening, darkening the butterfly burn tool. I say, I want to, uh, I want to, dark darken the edges down here along the, the bottom sort of like vignette so I'm, I'm creating a little darker area down the bottom of the picture so i can do that but as i do that it's, that's destructive editing because i'm actually changing the pixels on that picture there uh, another way to do that i'm going to go delete those things i can go up to this this is where blend modes come interesting i can go up to this gray area here okay now it's overlaid i change the blend mode there's a blend mode group what it does is it takes anything that's 50% gray and it, you can see right through it. Now you can see right through it. Anything darker than 50% gray, it darkens. Anything lighter, it lightens. So now I can use my dodge and burn tool and I can dodge on top of this, the same picture. You see, I'm getting the same effect. And if you look at this layer here, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm dodging so around. So it's not this destructive. Thing. It's non-destructive. Now I can turn yeah. that on and off. I've done away with it dodging. I can look at what I've done and I can undo it. Uh, if I want to uh, do, if I want to go back and, and do some dodging, I can do the same thing. You know, I can, I can, you know, fool around with the dodge tool. So that's a non-destructive way of doing it. There's another non-destructive way of doing it. Let me, and that's the, that's the beauty of blend modes. That's the beauty of blend modes. It's just an example of a of, of blend mode. If I, if I go back, I do a, it's very similar. Now I just did a blank layer, right? What I can do now is I take the brush, I can paint with white, then take the opacity down. If I just paint with white on the, on, on this, uh, on, on the, uh, you can see I'm, I'm creating a, uh, but if I change the blend mode of this thing to overlay, I get the same sort of effect and I can change, I can change the opacity of this thing. So I can dodge and burn with this also uh, doing the same thing. Here's the, the wings of the butterfly there to make them a little brighter. And I'm just doing that with white and black. So I can do the same thing by, you know, making this, this little darker. So I'm, it's, it's also a technique for dodging and burning, just using uh, a brush on a black layer on a blank layer using overlay. Um, another one of my favorite uh, little tricks. Let's let's go to this picture here. I want to lay a sky on top of this this uh, picture of Montreal. Okay, so I, I I put a sky picture on top of it. Okay, there's another overlay mode, uh, another blend mode called lighten or darken. So if you look at if if you look at this the uh, this thing here, the sky is pretty blown out. The buildings are dark, but the sky is pretty blown out. If I put this this sky picture here is it's generally darker than the sky behind it. So what I do is I, I select darken. 
There it is. And it blended the sky in. Pretty de decent, but of course it blended into the buildings here a little bit too, where it's lighter. Uh, but that's, that's a good way to start. And then I change the opacity, bring the opacity down a little bit to make, make it blend, blend in a little bit better. And I've got myself a little bit better sky. So that's using blend modes. Of course, with the, uh, Photoshop now has the new uh, sky feature that this was the old way of doing it. <laughs> you know, but but blend, that's what blend modes are. So as you look at look through here, blend modes give you some interesting things. The other thing you can do with blend modes is um, uh, I can create if I'm if I'm uh, trying to colorize an old black and white picture, uh, I can do a, a fill, a, a, say a, a, a fill color on this thing of um, I'll just do a fill color of, of anything color uh, color red. Okay, I can use that. Um, I can then start, I can change the blend mode to uh, the color. Uh, there's a lot of things you can start to do with uh, with uh, with these blend modes. And and I think what the, the best thing to do is to play around with them. You can yeah. see the differences as I, as I screen go over the blend modes, you can see the changes. Yeah, it's okay. a good rainy day activity. <laughs> oh yeah, it's some it's good fun. Now, what I I have used it in the past for is to is to colorize old pictures. But yeah, what you'll do then is let's let's show you the next piece. Uh, I take this layer here. I can now do masks. If I go down here below, I can put this red where I want it. It doesn't have to be over the entire picture. Okay. So what I can do now is I can click a mask, and there's two ways to click that mask. If I click a mask, I get a white mask. What that means is I can see through that. The mask is not blocking anything, okay? If if I, let me go do Control-Z. If I hit down the Option key or the Alt key on, on, a, on Windows and hit the mask, I created a black mask. Black hides everything. So black hides, white reveals. So now now you can see that, that uh, you can't see the red. But I let's say I want to see the red some, some spots. I can go now with using my brush to make it white. And I'll make the brush flow 100%. And I can start painting in this red color where I want it. So now you can see what I've done here. And of course, I would change the brush to whatever setting I wanted on the brush, hardness-wise. And that's that's for another class, hardness and size and things like that. So I can, I can go around now. And, and I can also change the opacity so I don't have as much effect or more effect. So there's more effect there. I want to make a subtle effect of it. I can I can bring the opacity down to the brush and make a more subtle effect. So I can add some colors in, uh, you know, to highlight some areas that I might want to want to do. So that's masking on on a on a particular layer. Um, there's another kind of adjustments here. So there's really two kinds of um, two kinds of layers, I should say. Okay. There's um. Let's see. So there's there's a new. These are basically fill or content layers. The butterfly's got content in it. The color's got content in it. Those are all content layers. Even, even the, the shape has got content in it. And the base layer is content. Those are content layers. And there's also something called a uh, an adjustment layer. And there's different kinds of adjustments. Okay. So I can I can do a, a new adjustment layer. Uh, and this is this is where uh, when you the difference between Lightroom and, and Photoshop really comes into, into play. Let me let me start doing a, a couple of things. I'm going to take some things off here. Oh, to get rid of a layer, by the way, just drag it into the garbage can down below. Okay. So I, I'm going to just drag a couple of these away because I don't need them. I want to, uh, this beautiful picture I have of the butterflies and all that stuff. <laughs> I just, I want to make some adjustments to it. Okay. Let's, let's take that out. Okay. So I, I'm going to start with this picture here and I want to make some adjustments to this picture. I'm gonna get rid of this layer of the white on it too. So now I'm just down to the base layer and these two butterflies again, all right? So I can go to the very top here and I go to this little icon here, which is an adjustment icon. There's two ways of doing adjustments to this, this image here. I can go up to image adjustment and pick out levels, curves, all these kind of things. The trouble is that those are destructive. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the change on that image, right? On the, on, what you're going to write on the image. The other way to do it is using layers, which is doing those same adjustments down here. So I can do that and you'll see the same thing show up here. So now what I could, could do, for example, is do a curves adjustment. 
I, I now have the property of the curves adjustment here and you see a new layers come up here, okay? And now I can do some things like add a little contrast, a little, little, little S, S, uh, S curve to the, to the uh, thing. Now that's added some contrast. I wanna see what it did so I can go to the little I here, click it on and off to see what I did. So that's good, I can see I like that. Uh, I can leave it alone, but maybe I didn't wanna do it to the entire picture. Say I wanted to uh, you know, make this a little darker but I'm thinking that's too that's too dark. I like what it did to this butterfly, but I don't like what it or the the, the butterfly, but I don't want to do it to the whole picture. Then I can take this adjustment here, hold down the option key, and as I get in between the two, you'll see that little icon appears. That's a clipping mask. It also it also appears here. I can clip this adjustment to just the area the the layer above it. I mean below it. Clip those two together. Or right now, it's affecting the entire all all these images. So if I if I hit the clipping adjustment, okay, and now I pull pull around with with this this adjustment, you'll see the, the little yellow fly, butterfly changes, but the others don't. Mm. So that's that's a way to make the adjustment just to this particular layer here. If I unclip it and do the same thing, now it does it to everything. So as you do the adjustments, depends on what you want to adjust, right? So you, you, you want to either clip the adjustment just to the layer below it or to everything down below that. So that's another way of, of, uh, of that's another adjustment here. Then that, like, going further to the right, there's a little folder here. What does that folder do? Well, the folder allows me to group different layers. So if I want to select that layer, hold down the shift key or control key and, and click that layer, and hit the little folder. Now I've got a group. Now these two things are together, both butterflies, and I can now rename the layers. So let's go and do that. Here's the base layer. The second layer up, I can I can double click there and call that copy of base. So as Chris said in Lightroom, keeping organized is important. The, sometimes you get into this thing, you'll have. I I can get into some of my images. Will have twenty layers on it. You know. And, and the group, I can call that butterflies. If I can spell, anyways, butterflies. And if I can open them up, I can see there the butterflies on here. And what, what's nice about that is I can add a mask to the entire group if I want to. Okay, so now if I go to that mask and I go to, uh, let me get my paintbrush and exit out, I can now start, um, let's see. I don't want to do that with paint, paintbrush. Next. Start painting on the mask here. I can get rid of get rid of uh, parts of the butterfly if I want or this part of the butterfly because it's applying to the entire mask. Wow. Oh, okay. uh, so so uh, you can see what I'm doing here. So you can group things. You can also change the blend mode of the entire group. So if I uh, let me get rid of the mask by dragging it down to there. So if I wanted to. Uh, I can get to this butterfly thing and I can now go, it says pass through here because it's, it's what it's, it says is it's, it's accepting whatever these blend modes are. These were both normal, but I can change the entire group here. Instead of pass through, I can change that to darken. Remember darken takes the darker pixels and shows them up. So now if I were to move the, uh, the, uh, the butterflies around, um, You'll see the darker pixels show up. So, but the others uh, show through. So that like, you get a different effect here. Same thing with this guy here. So the blend modes, uh, because it, it, it's it's using this dark and blend blend mode from the from the group. Uh, anyway, so that's that's an, that's the other thing that happens here. I think I showed you that group grouping thing. That's create a new layer, and that's the garbage can. Up above, you've got uh, two blend modes and fill. That's about it. Uh, uh, text. Oh, there, there, there's a, uh, there's, a, there's another thing you can do with clipping that's pretty, pretty nice too. Let me, let me do the, uh, let me do this. Uh, let me, let me do to, uh, go to layers. I don't want to do text. Um, layers. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna go back and get all these guys here. Um, I don't want to do that filter, but let's go back to the images. Um, I'm going to go back to the the, the uh, 
the uh, the image here, put some text on it. It's another thing you can do with clip layers. Let's go to uh, uh, butterfly. I will I will just make that uh, text bigger. So if I take this butterfly text here, and then I take this big butterfly, and I'm going to lay this big butterfly uh, on top of that text, you'll see what I'm doing in a second here. I'm going to clip the butterfly to the, to the text below. So, and you'll see the, what you can do to the, uh, let's see, butterfly. Okay, butterfly text and option click. Okay, uh, it wants me to complete the action. Okay, guys. Uh, heck. Where where am I missing something here? Hmm. There we go. Clip that. Okay, what I did is I clipped the butterfly to the, um, to the and it and it embedded it in the text. Uh, okay. So so if you wanted to make that kind of effect, you could, and I can add a little bevel to the thing. Um, you know, it's it's just it allows you to do some special effects. I can I can clip a picture uh, one of the layers right into, um, into the into the uh, into the layer down below it. So it's clip, clipping does allows you to do some different things too. Um, so move. I can move the butterfly around behind it. <laughs> Anyways, that's uh, I think I've covered just about everything in basic yeah. layers. Um, qu questions? I mean, well, that's why it's like you said. It's it's you know I don't do a lot of composites, but sometimes it's good to do something like this just to experiment and uh, and then see how it works. You know how how different layers work. Um, well, the thing but... the thing I find it really useful I, I do a lot of website stuff and things that I, I do create graphics and uh, mm -hmm. you know for presentations and all that kind of good stuff i'll do you know this kind of thing uh for for some sort of graphic for whatever i'm doing um and it's it's fabulous for that uh, lightroom's got a lot of i mean photoshop's got a lot of other powers i mean this kind of power that i'm showing you here does not exist in lightroom hmm. just flat yeah, doesn't exist cool. you can't do layers you can't do blending you can't bring in Two images on top of each other. You just can't do that. Um, yeah. You know, you, it, well, one that, one you know, new, really new change they did that I I don't like. If you, I used to use a shortcut Control S would be to save, but when you do that, your only option is like PSD. If you want to save it as a JPEG, you have to do Control uh, uh, Save a Copy. Mm -hmm. So it's an extra step that you mm -hmm. yeah. have to have. It's kind of irritating. <laughs> hey, Chris, Chris, you wondered the other day, you mentioned something about smart objects. Smart. There, There is another way in Lightroom to do non-destructive, I mean in Lightroom, in Photoshop, to do non-destructive editing. So if I take this little butterfly up here and I want to do some editing with them, and I, I want to use, for example, these filters up here. Okay. There's these these really neat filters. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to do something stylized and I want to oil, make it oil painting on it. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to go oil paint this guy. It, it, if I do that, it's going to be destructive. It's going to be right on that. That image is going to be created and oil painted out. The way to, to avoid that is if I write, if I go here to the right side of this, 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 uh, there's another, there's another menu. And I, there's a reason I want to do this There's another menu for layers. If I go to a layer and I go to the empty area next to the picture, I can, there's a lot of things I can do, new group, et cetera, et cetera. But I, one of the things I can do is create to a, uh, convert to a smart object. So if I can convert this to a smart object, okay, now, um, let's see. Let me go back to, where'd you go, where'd you go, baby? My computer stopped responding here a second. Okay. Go back. I just want to get. Oh, I see. The problem is, it's probably still in the group. Let me let me go back to convert to smart object. What happened? It's not supposed to disappear on the guy. Um, convert to smart object. It did. Oh, that's because it's thinking it's. Let me, let me 
control Z. I'm going to do something. I'm going to create a new layer out of this thing. Okay. Now I'm going to see if I can do that here. Where's the smart, smart object? Yeah, okay. For some reason, it's uh, not doing what I want it to do. Um, Maybe you could ungroup it. Yeah, I think I think I have to ungroup the thing. That's what, what the problem is. It's in the group, and it's confused because it's in the group. Okay. Let me just do to... Uh, I'm going to go up to this thing here. And uh, this is the background layer. I just want to see if I... Should, it shouldn't do the same thing. I'm not sure why it's 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 not it's disappearing on me. Uh, it shouldn't because I've done this a thousand times. Um, convert to smart smart object. Did the same thing here. Let me go to a different picture. I do this all the time. <laughs> it doesn't disappear on me typically. I don't use this computer all the time. I use the one downstairs. Um, Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, flatten, great. The clipping mask, convert to layers, re reduce. See, it's giving me a different menu here than it is the other one. Convert to smart object. Okay, now that that did the right thing. That little icon means a smart object. Now, if I go to uh, these filters up here, and I use any of these filters, okay, I can use. A, a, let's go to a stylize, a oil paint. Okay, now it's got, I get an oil painting filter. Uh, I can do some some crazy things to this thing, create an oil painting look to it. Uh, you can see what it's, it's, it's hard to see what it's doing here. Let's go down to where you can see something. Let's go to. Oh, I, oh that's because I'm on the sky, I'm on the sky, okay. Um, Cancel. I want to go to. I want to do an oil painting on this darn thing. Let's do. Let me go to layer. Yeah. Flatten. And now I'll do. Uh, Man, gee, I can't. I can't make a smart object out of the. Uh, out of the base layer, so I'll do that. Now I can go to create smart object. Convert to smart object. Now it's giving me that little icon. Now if I go to a, a filter, any filter, it doesn't really matter. Just trying to show you what a smart object. It's like a layer. It's non-destructive. So I can. I can go to uh, stylize oil paint. Um, okay, now as you can see, it's it's changed the the, the picture sort of to an oil painting look. Um, uh, trying to make this big enough so you can see the differences. Um, lighting. So it, and then and the preview here, you can see it's an oil painting. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is now it took that object instead of creating a, a uh, it, it in, impacting the picture itself, it created a smart filter down below. And I can turn and the oil turn, painting. If you turn that off, then then it goes yeah, away. It goes away. Yeah. Okay. So that that's a that's an important reason to use um, this uh, smart filter. The other the other things you can do, for example, if I if I wanted to sharpen this particular image, one of the ways of sharpening it is to is to create a copy of it. Um, this is a a particular way of doing it. Uh, I can go to now filter other high pass call high pass sharpening remember the blend mode that gray and black so gray disappears well if i go to the uh, uh, put high pass filter guess what i got a gray filter and you can see it's darker around here so i can but i don't know how much i want to how much of this i want to do so if i don't do smart object i'm going to do it and i have one shot okay so what i can what i can do is let me cancel that let me go make a smart object out of this first and i'll show you why i did that um, convert to smart object. Now, if I go to filter other high pass, I can now say, okay, I like it. Let's see what happens here. And I can change the blend mode now back to uh, overlay. And with this high pass filter, if you can see it, it pop makes everything really pop. If I go in closer, um, Okay, it, that high pass filter. If you just look at the bar, the bars here and stuff, it it does it does a, a but but the point is I, I, sometimes you don't you get some noise on this thing here now. Um, 
But this, I can go back now and say, well, I, I did too much. I want to back off on the high pass filter. So now I can go back in, click on, double click on that and back off a little bit. You know, until I get it to where I want it. I had, I, I did it too much. It's too grungy. You know, so that's, that's, that's another reason to do that is you can now, you can make a change and then back off. Um, so that's, that's a, that's, that's, that's the it, alternative to uh, layers is smart object. Anyways, enough of that. Okay. I'll Can let, I let, just say that when you're talking destructive versus non-destructive, yeah. one way when you're finished making all your changes and you go to save it, save it as put a letter B after it or something, and it, you haven't overwritten your original file. So when you get to the very end and, and you don't want to permanently change your original picture, you could just name it something different, and your original file is still there. That, 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 that's true, uh, uh, Emily. If you're coming in like I did directly off a file into Photoshop, if I come into Photoshop from Lightroom, that's not a problem because yeah. Lightroom won't save on top of the old picture, Lightroom will save a new picture, yeah. a new version. You know, so you'll have two pictures. You come back from Photoshop and you'll have the original one was there. You take that original one, you go up to Photoshop with it, you do your thing, saves it back. It doesn't save it on top of the other one. It saves it next to it. Right, next to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so okay, I'm going to move in here. I'll keep, keep it moving. Thank you, Chuck. That was good. Yeah. It was very informative. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to finish our session by talking a little bit about... Um, uh, Blah, blah, blah. Hold on. Make, make sure I pick the right screen instead of talking. Uh, we're going to talk about Photoshop elements. Uh, I, I realized that we probably need to uh, think of other members in the club who, who uh, have Photoshop elements. And I thought, you know, I remember when I, you know, I had it years ago, it came, it came with an Epson scanner I got as bundled software back then. I think I got my first copy of Photoshop that way too, because I used to give it out for free. Uh, anyway, they don't do that anymore. Uh, but I, I went ahead. It was on sale yet, like about the beginning of March for like two weeks. They dropped it from 99 to 69. And I thought, well, 69 bucks, it's pretty good for a program. So I went ahead and got it. And I've actually been pretty impressed with it. When you open it, uh, uh, it will come up. You'll give it this first screen. This is like the, the you have a choice choices to make here. Um, they've made it very user friendly. So there's like there's like different videos you can watch if you want to try different things here. You've got you know several different things you can you can experiment with. Okay, um, but you have you can choose the organizer. Now this is really cool because uh, it's it's a lot like Lightroom. It, you can import images, you can organize a catalog, and do all this stuff, and then it makes it easier to go back when you're in the edit part of Photo Editor to go back in and uh, uh, pull up pictures that you've imported. I'm not gonna go into the organizer this time, I'm just gonna point it out, it's right here. If I click on it, it would open and open up. Uh, we do have photo editor, which is what I'm gonna talk about. And I've got it open, I'm gonna pop it up here in a, is it this window here? Okay, that should be pop popped up. All right, so I hope you're all seeing the photo editor. Um, one thing they do, let me, let me move this bar. I hate how they do this. You know, they have to put it somewhere. Oh, I'm going to move it to the other screen. You know, Chuck, the bar that had, we were talking about it the other night that floats there, uh, yeah. for screen sharing. I just moved it to a different, different, uh, screen. Yeah. So are y'all still seeing this, uh, Photoshop yeah. elements panel? Okay. So this is the editor. And one thing they've done now, I'm going to talk about some of the new things in 2024 version. One thing they changed was you you normally it was in the light mode where everything is white and the print is black the the type you know for the menus and stuff i tend to my eyes are real sense to like a darker panel uh like I, I do that in photoshop i do that in lightroom and you can do that now uh here um by going into your preferences general and right here you can choose dark or light and I'm not going to change it because if you change it, you have to restart the program. But light would be like just everything would be white. I haven't liked dark. Uh, and it's got all it's very similar to Photoshop. You know, you've got your how to save files, where are you going to save them, your, your performance, you know, memory usage, uh, you know, are you using your graphics processor and 
scratch disk, where do you want the scratch disk? Very similar to how Photoshop preferences work in general. Uh, you know, do you want inches, points, pixels, you know, the guides and things like that. So that's where you go in and fine tune your preferences of how you how you want it. Um, they give you three modes. So there's quick, quick. You know, th that's like the uh, the little green auto on your top of your camera dial. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's that's the one with the training wheels on. And if you if you look at it in quick, you only have a couple of menu choices here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just open an image real quick. I'm going to bring up, oh, this is one from the Botanic Gardens from yesterday. And what you'll notice is, okay, I just clicked open. And what did it do? It brought it up in Adobe Camera Raw, which is uh, something we're all familiar with. If, if you open things in Photoshop or if you, sometimes you go out of Bridge, if anyone uses that program, um, it, it basically is very similar to the Lightroom uh, editing, you know, tool. Uh, and this this comes up like this, and I could say, you know, it's not bad. I I might crop it a little differently just before I get started, and I'm gonna crop down there. And I'm gonna pull that in there, just kind of like, sort of rule of thirds. I don't know, I just something here, and I'm gonna say, yeah, that looks good uh, on the crop. And then I want to come into uh, back to the edits, and I'm gonna say, let's just do auto to get started. Yeah, that's not bad. Kind of made a nice picture out of it. And I'm gonna say open, so it's gonna go and open there. And it opens up, it's, you know, just like Lightroom, just like Photoshop. And I'm in the simple mode. So I only have simple choices um, to make here. And uh, as far as tools, either the toolbar is more limited in the in the um, in this mode. Uh, you have down here, you got your photo bin, which if you had more photos, if you had imported, you'd have that's where they would be in this in this uh, strip down here. Uh, you have different tool options, of course, undo, redo, rotate, uh, home screen, which is that first screen I showed you that when we opened. Um, down here, th this right panel frames, you see I have frames in blue. Uh, if I hit textures, uh, these are all, all like overlays and things. Uh, quick edits, quick quick actions are actually kind of cool. I mean, if I, I'm going to just see, I'm going to click on smart fix, see what it does. Or F. And I'm going to come up here. I'm on the left side now. For I want to show you this. I'm going to do this before and after because I think that's kind of cool. So that's what I, when I opened it out of Adobe Camera Raw. And this is with the color fix. And you know, this is that if you're only going to have it on your your uh, Facebook or Instagram page for a fleeting moment, it's nice to have. Usually, you want a little punchy. So that's one. You've got a color correction one. Uh, artifacts removal. You've got a lot of little quick tools in here. You can do color black and white photos now, you know, which which a lot of programs are coming out with. Uh, you can do things with the background, like let's say I want to do a black and white background. Ooh, okay, so so you know it's and it's did a pretty darn good job of selecting uh, uh, selecting the the item there. So and if I don't like that, I could hit Control Z or I can always hit that one to go back that little that little back back arrow up there. Um, so these are all things that are in the quick action tools. Uh, subject, you can do that. Uh, black and white subject is what we just did. Uh, you can add lens flare, a vignette, a stained glass look. You know, there's there's a lot of things in here. I was impressed um, impressed with this that you had this many this many options. They also have the guided. I'm going to click on the guided, and that's going to take you to this window. The guided tool is it's it's almost like it has tutorials. So if you wanted to, you know, you want to learn how to add text, uh, it you can be done in this. Uh, if you're not sure how to do brightness and contrast, uh, that that's easily done. Uh, light and darken, correct skin tones, crop photo levels, um, object removal. We're going to do that in a second. Uh, so there's there's quite a few things in here. You know, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. If I did a vignette effect. What does it do? It's taking okay. All right. So I want to suggest a dark vignette. Oh, that's like a little too much. We'll slide it out and see. And refine the shape. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm I've never done this before. So if I'm not if I'm it's not feathered. It's going to have a hard edge. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So you can you can play with these uh, 
I know how to do it, obviously, in other programs like Lightroom. But the fact that they they included in sort of the the guided thing, I think I, it, it works pretty well. It gives you a lot of options uh, to go with. And then if you go into advanced, uh, that will end that. That's OK. Let's discard. OK. And when we go into advanced, then we're looking more like Photoshop. You've just doubled the amount of tools you have options for. Um, and over here, what do we have? We have, <laughs> we have layers and other things like that. So, you know, I'm thinking I can probably do a control J. Yeah, they, uh -huh. they have made a copy. So this would be so similar to what Chuck was just talking about if you wanted to do some things in here. Um, What's the difference between this and Photoshop? Well, uh, probably about what? 300, uh, well, <laughs> Photoshop's what, about, you know, to $180 a month or something. No, I mean, a year. 20 bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. 20, you, you, you own this until you want to do an upgrade. It oh. also does, it does video and it's cheaper. I mean, it's under $100. So uh, it's typically 99. I got it for 69. Uh, it, it, and I think, in my opinion, it's more user friendly, you know, Photoshop can be scary <laughs> hey, Chris, when you first Chris, get into qu it. Qu question on that. Uh, can you link into uh, plugins with us too? Like Topaz? Yeah, stuff? you can. Um, where did I see? Yeah. I don't I have, have any plugins. I know when I went here to edit. Did you under filters or file, maybe? Yeah. Well, when I went here to edit preferences, uh, plugins, I don't think I have any plugins linked. But I think oh. you you know you could link them here, so then okay. you should be able to use your other most other programs that run in Photoshop, like you know uh, Luminar Neo or uh, Photo right. AI or something Topaz. Uh, you should be able to add the plugins there. Okay. I haven't done it because I just bought this program like a week and a half ago, so I'm still yeah. sort of I'm learning with it. Um, but well, if you reinstall Topaz, it'd probably ask you, do you want to link to this too? Something. Yeah, yeah. And and it, it or I could just go to the whatever the folder is that, that I have it for other programs yeah. and move it over to here. Right. But uh but I, overall I've been pretty I've been pretty impressed with it. I'm gonna do one other thing here. I don't I know I said so the, the difference is that this one will not give you automatic updates. Right. Well, you you'll get updates probably for the version. You know, until they go to version so and so, and they move yeah. up a number, if if they're like decimal point updates, that's typically how you get those. Okay. And then when they go, when they come out with Photoshop Elements 2025, you you might have to pay an update uh, fee for that, like a license fee or something. Um, but you know, the the thing is, you have it on your computer, and and you own it, and this also has the 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 Premiere Video. Uh, programs you can edit video in it so uh it it's it's yeah it, it's got it, it's one of those things if you want a simpler version i think it's more user friendly um i'm going to open one other thing here i'm going to say open uh edit them i want to bring up one of my grandkids soccer game pictures and i'm going to say okay let's say we want to do we want to edit this first of all i want to crop it a little it, it's in the camera raw I don't think the goalie is really important to this picture. Uh, I could crop this guy out, but then you'd be cropping his arm. I'm just going to leave him there. Okay. And I'm going to say, uh, let's just go ahead and do an auto. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. We're going to open it. Okay. Hold on. It opened in another window. Okay. And I'm going to come over here. And I want to go to the guided. Okay. Yeah, guided, and I'm going to do an object removal because I don't like that big trash can in there. Okay. And I'm going to say, let's just do the using auto here on the thing. And it says, click and drag to draw a rectangle around the object. Okay. I'm going to let's get rid of the trash can. I'm going to go like that. Oops. I didn't quite go all the way. Oh, it did a, it did a pretty good job. And I played with this the other day. I could go in there and refine this this clipping mat or this uh, ant trail, but what I found worked better was to just go ahead and say remove object, boom, and then I can say 
let's do do a little more. I'm going to remove it over here now. It's it's almost like it two tone color. It needed that, and I'm going to say I did a pretty good job of removing that. And I'm going to say remove object. And you know, other than a few shadow variations, I mean, you could always come in, you know, with like a uh, bring that make that bigger. You could come in here with a a little healing brush and maybe. You know, if you wanted to just kind of, I don't know, well, that made that white. Uh, yeah, so you 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 have options that you could do there. You could take that whole thing off if you want. Let's just move it out. Oh, it didn't go away. Okay. We'll just leave it. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> the rule in retouching is don't make it worse. You know, so. <laughs> but this is just an example. I, I'm I, I'm only I I'm just getting into this program, so I'm I don't have a whole lot more for you. But but I don't know. And, and Pam, is this much different than your version that you're running? Oh, Pam, you're muted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm muted. Um. It, no, it it's ver it's very similar. That makes it easier the way you just did it there, which is not in my older program. But um, the one thing I noticed that you went by it had um, add sky. Did, have you tried that one in this? I haven't tried that. Uh, that that's probably under guided. Um, I have not tried that one yet. I'm gonna say no. I don't want to change that. Um, yeah. So you can. Uh, where did it have add sky? Was that in the guided or not? I don't um, know. I'm not well, sure. I, what I, I saw it there before. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it, and it was. Well, there. I might not have an image up, and that might make any uh, uh, might make the reason. But like I said, I've only had this for a week and a half, so I wanted to kind of more just do some of the highlights of the new features on it. Uh, I think I think it's it's going to be a really good program. It's just again. Yeah. Do you do you need to, does everyone need a, a full board version of Photoshop? Maybe not, but if you get Lightroom, you already you know they throw it in there. You get Bridge as well if you use that. Uh, so and Camera Raw. Yeah, yeah. So and this of course Adobe Camera Raw basically opens in all these programs and it's very similar in all the programs. So that's pretty much all I have for this meeting. Um, so I was trying to keep it you know sort of roughly hour and a half to two hours. Um, why don't does any is there anything you'd like us to cover in future? I'm looking at the monitor over here. I'm going to move you guys back over here. Um, let me know if there's something we should be covering or not. You know, different things to cover. There's a lot of things that are new in both Photoshop and Lightroom and the Photoshop elements. Is anyone here working on a third-party program like um, Luminar or anything like that? as a main program. We might include that sometimes because sometimes, you know, uh, we were mentioned Topaz, which has a wonderful suite of AI uh, programs that take out sharpness or noise. And then they have photo AI, which sort of comp comprises all three gigapixel and all that. Mm -hmm. So we will, we will do some stuff with that. I was telling Chuck just before we started one of my shots, I posted it on Facebook uh, yesterday, but it was one of those Iris plants. And I did what our speaker said to do. I just sat there and waited and you know, a little yellow jacket landed and I did a shot of it. And and when I when I processed it in Lightroom, it looked pretty good. And I thought, you know, I could be a little sharper. And I took it into photo AI and it like zap. It just just fixed it. So all right. Oh, you took me out of that. Good. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's just okay. I wanted to see your pretty face. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's all I have for today. Um, but I just want, you know, I think it's a good way to start and just kind of cover some basics. Uh, I'll, we'll come up with some other ideas. If you have things you'd like us to cover, send me uh, a message, chris at chrissummers.net. It's a good way to get rid of, get rid of me, get, get in touch with me. And uh, we'll just, you know, and if someone else wants to host a segment, something you've learned how to do, I'll also get out, the, we'll send out a link, we'll post up some photos and if you want to play with them, it's just interesting to see. We might have time at a, at a session to to look and go, wow, ever, you know, you did something I would have never done, but it looks great. You know, something I like, like that idea, Chris. I yeah. think that could be yeah, fun. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you all go. My, hard work. my wife and I have to go get some Buntinis. It's our, our daughter, our daughter-in-law's 45th birthday. So Love. we're headed to the Buntini place. So. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff. Thank you. Both. Bye. Bye.